Yep. Yep. Good morning, everybody. We're going to call the meeting for the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop for uh, Saturday, uh, September 21st to order. The time is now 9.05 a.m. First item, as always, is the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'd ask you to please rise. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands one nation under God. So at this time, I'll open up the floor to public comments. These are being audio and video oh, recorded. Yeah. 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 That's true. Sorry, I'm skipping. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I so, just want to make sure. Yeah, that's 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 always, and I should yeah. probably do the same. Anybody in the audience, if you have a cell phone, please be sure to sign up and vibrate. That way we don't disrupt the meeting. Uh, uh -huh. At this time, I'll open up the floor to public comments. If anybody would like to say something, we ask that you come to the podium, we would state your name and address for the record, and then also sign in on the sheet. Okay, seeing so you none. Know. Oh, um, I take that back. Well, there's two names. Oh, there is. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Beverly Johnson, 412 uh, Walker Street, Snosper. I just wanted to know how things are going as far as what's going to happen with the program. Paint. Everything's been put on hold for right now because we have some other issues that are quite pending. I, I understand, but we have not gotten through any of that. Okay. Issue yet. Okay. So so there's some there's some other bigger issues right now. I apologize. It, it's on my list of things to do, and I'm going to try to catch up with you on it this week. But there's some other major issues that we come across. And I'm not to ignore you, uh, but the other things to kind of to press so, Thank you. Thank you though for your persistence. Okay. General announcement, uh, if you haven't had your septic systems pumped already and you know you're in a zone that needs to be pumped, please be sure to get that scheduled and done. Um, we are still accepting letters of support around getting grants. The residents of Stonecroft were very, very, very kind in getting a lot of letters of support for grant funding. We greatly appreciate that. Thank you very much to, to that community and its residents. Um, Going into the main item for discussion, Act 537, uh, no major updates since the last uh, meeting. We are uh, approved from a, uh, say, an initial design standpoint, but we do not have approval of the final design. We already have to file for additional permits. going to be additional things that we have to seek grant opportunities. And really what it boils down to is we have to keep going through and hitting the milestones that are in the plans that we don't start getting fined on a regular basis. Uh, based on, we have Hyper Terror in the audience today. Is there anything that you guys would like to bring up or let us know? Uh, so there, just a jump. Hey, maybe uh, like a maybe on your agenda. Okay. Should we call that? See you all. Good see you. I think the major thing to report it well, just kind of bouncing off of the city management program. Uh, there were three additional pumping reports submitted in August. For a total of 66 reports. Encouragement that I think we could have a pump before we start getting colder. Uh, best time to see any identify any problems is during the growing season, especially as dry as it's been. Green grass growing, that might be suspect. Uh, second item, uh, really the only major thing that I have in this is other than this is important. The 2022 LSA grant, uh, we did on Friday submit on a application for that. Um, we need to you know, you take a look at a quick note on the bottom of the engine suggesting what it, what it was to be applied to. Oh. Remember, you know, on the previous yeah. was yes. like the questions. So I tried to get a statement in here for the so, you know, go ahead and move forward from that standpoint. I think we've accomplished under that grant. 
and we're excited to start on the uh, three LSA to try and wrap up design out there. <laughs> we need to uh, make sure we have all the information and take, put some time studying on all this, you know, consolidated effort. <laughs> Big budget there for us to get the hours. We're trying to pack as much fun on the one period as we can. Yes. Anyway, thank you very much. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you too. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. 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 You go ahead, Kevin. Yeah. Um, we really do write to the there are professionals. Something off uh, Joe's statement, just some brief uh, grant updates. We had a conversation regarding the multi purpose community facilities grant. We had secured support from the Earth County Commissioners. So when that and I were there, it was a conversation. And we just let them know where it comes to funding. And so it seems like Perks County is going to be looking into coordinating with us. And they're very aware that we have a super project and uh, lots of other projects related to this. We need to hear back from that. And then, uh, in terms of current grant opportunities, the sewer we're going to be designing for it. So I would suggest um, this current LSA statewide, which is September 1st through November 30th. Um, however, if there's any emergency supplies follow-up or things that the um, police may like, um, I can certainly draft a letter with your approval and say that there's another statewide policy they're interested in. And the final update on that is the Commonwealth Financing Authority had their meeting September 17th, but pushed off making decisions again on the last year's LSA grant. So um, we are still waiting, and I'm hoping to hear in October or next meeting. Fingers crossed, because people statewide are looking to see they're going to be important. So uh, we need to get in touch with Chief John to see if there's anything else that he'd like to make a request of this upcoming uh, request, and I'll talk to John as well. Absolutely. Okay. Let them know that their previous requests are just still outstanding. Yeah. Okay. So they need to get the So this is to apply for the city that we Yes, I would. I would. Well, I'm not sure if we'll have after the old decisions, I would mean, double check whether the decision for the radio is in phase is in October or November, and then the LSA statewide is in November again. I was hoping there would be the size of 117 as previous with the sports Yeah, yeah. yeah. it would make sense. Yeah, but yeah. I would contact our representatives and ask them if we aren't awarded, okay, what was the reason and how can we take a look at this again? Fantastic. Yeah, I believe. That's, that's all for us. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for your support. It's been absolutely wonderful. Yeah, you, guys, you guys have been an absolute light on. Thank you. Absolutely. I'll take the next items. Actually, I'm going to flip uh, item number two and item number three because it makes a little bit more sense to just talk it that way. Um, so I know we can talk about this. Stay out of the rain. Uh, I know we had discussed uh, items of. Uh, about new building previously. Uh, now it's kind of imminent. So this uh, past uh, month, I think about two weeks ago, we received a letter from our insurer about uh, the building. If we don't make certain repairs, the building will not be in shape. Uh, so some of those repairs include fixing the wall of the garage, which has not been stabilized or repaired. A band-aid to that would be twenty five to 30000 The repair would be between uh, 70 to 80,000 as an estimate. We all know from estimates. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah, no, I have, I have the estimates oh, yeah. here. And, and I, I spoke to the group and they told me how much to add on to um, for inflation, increased costs. We all know the estimates are exactly their estimates. And when you open up a project, you could potentially put more into it. Um, as a result of the wall pulling away, there's other deficiencies that the insurance company. Uh, wanted us to uh, fix uh, that entire wall, both upstairs and downstairs, have some issues. As a result, of that wall pulling away from the building is caused other cracks in the upstairs. Um, they wanted us to have a roof inspected. They, say they wanted us to have the roof inspected. 
and there's a number of other issues throughout the building. So I contacted a company to come and give us an additional estimate for all that, um, uh, including these windows here, which are actually pulling away from the building. Heavy rains, we get water into this room. So um, the gentleman that walked through the building didn't give us a number yet. He figured with his estimates plus um, what was given to us by the Whitmer group that with due to brick wall, we're lo looking at between 100 and you know, 40 to $150,000 to put into the building just to fix the problems. Um, it doesn't improve our function. It just remedies some of the issues that the insurance company wants us to do. And if we fix it, there's still no guarantee that they're going to insure us. So part of that problem is if we don't have insurance, we cannot meet here uh, for public meetings. We, this building can no longer be used. Period, end of the statement, it would need to be condemned because it no longer be functional. So that, that's a huge issue weighing on all of us. And, and we've spent the past uh, two weeks time scrambling and making a number of phone calls. So going back to item number two, the proposed new building Olson Design Group gave us a, a lovely plan. We had had discussions with um, the uh, senators and, and congressional offices. Um, we were given some immediate feedback, but, but nothing further as far as follow as far as funding. Most recently, as you heard, uh, can we tell us uh, we did speak with Commissioner Rivera's uh, office, and the look on his face was like, okay, 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 and he was seeking notes. And so we discussed the building at first, and then we said, oh, by the way, we have anywhere between 11 to $15 million sewer products, and we're a community that functions over a uh, $600,000 budget annually. And he's like, oh, he said, yes, it's a big, oh. Yeah. Um, so so that's, that's part of our problem where we're sitting at today. And that's why Beverly, I didn't need to blow you off earlier. Yeah. It, it's, it's scrambling. So it's like, okay, now what it is what the next question is? So we looked at first at some options over what we can do to continue um, functioning as a government. So one option we, we looked at was renting one of those office trailers. Um, I only got one vote so far. The other companies, for whatever reason, have not gotten back to me. Um, that quote would have been like a monthly rental of just under four thousand dollars. Doesn't include electricity. I think it may include the cleanup for the restroom, but I'm not 100 percent sure I have to pull them back. Um, there's a set of fee. Uh, there's all these fees associated with them coming and bringing by office trailer to our facility. It was a two-year term. Um, if we're going to do anything, if we're going to build, we know it's going to be here for at least a year, if not two years. The total cost to us is $123,000 over the course of two years. So $62,000 on top of what we currently pay for our, our operating uh, fees. So that was a little bit sobering. Uh, so then uh, myself and our secretaries, we started saying, okay, what are our other options? Another option would be purchasing a home in your community. So right now, within town, there's only three homes uh, that are for sale. They range in price from 379 to 279. Um, if we were to outright purchase it with like a zero percent down, uh, we're still looking at a monthly mortgage of like 24. I went on the the, the higher side. They're looking at a monthly mortgage of 2,400 dollars a month. Then you know you still have your electric gas. We still would have to have the cable fees, all the things associated with normal functioning of governments. Um, the problem with that is you don't know what you're going to get. It could be a can of worms. It could be a failed septic system. There could be no septic system. There could be just a cesspool. There could be a whole bunch of issues associated with owning a home, even though, let's say, you go through the process of getting things inspected, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, some, of, some of those stuff we should be able to identify. So, like, if it has Right. So, so, but, but personally, I don't want to get into the business of owning a home because as a township, now what do we do? We've done with the home, we try to sell it, are we going to use money on the sale or, you know, we're stuck with the property that we probably don't have. If it was something that happened, if it was something like, the one I was looking at is the one on Conrad Advisor Parkway because it would have physical space where we could put trucks, et cetera, et cetera. If we were talking about there was a large piece of property in town, blah, 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 that could potentially have been used for government purposes, I think we'd all be, be talking about a different story. But again, we don't have that kind of money, and I don't I don't want to go down that avenue. Personally, again, it's a discussion we need to have with all the supervisors. Um, option number C, 
uh, would have, would be was that we work from home so that we continue government functions. And this is something the ladies and I had talked about. We have to send for post office box. Um, the two secretaries that we hired, for those of you that don't know, Lisa Taggarty is now our, our full time secretary. We hired Slam and Kennedy um, as another, um, uh, I should say, they're both part time uh, secretaries. Um, so if either one of them were to work at home, we'd have them get set up with um, cell phones because the office phone is connected to this location. Uh, they would just have to have some minor things at home. One would need a printer. Uh, one would be a printer scanner, um, and uh, they would have to get reimbursed for their internet usage at home. Uh, and so after, and you'd have to do some minor things when it comes to getting the emails and stuff set up so they could work remotely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that cost is actually quite minimal, and we're looking like at an initial cost of about $4,000. Um, and that remains, uh, it would drop to about $3,000 or less a year for them to work at home. Um, we talked about the problem of people actually dropping off um, permits and things like that. So Lay's like, well, we can have times where we're actually present at the building like three times a week for a few hours where the people would, would know where they could pick things up and drop things off, plus having them post off this box. So that would be an expensive option. Um, this just all was, I have all the numbers here if you want to review them here, yeah. and I believe everything's in our pocket. Yeah, so I think it's... Yeah, it's everything's like here. So um, my, my concern with the sitting time, so yeah. I think they're in what... Right. So if it's here, they can't get going. Right, yeah. right. Sure. So, so is there... Yes, four. Yeah. Yeah. four. Um, so part of the other problem is storage. Yeah. So storage of items that we have, Sue God bless her, is already begun to go through all the things upstairs. So um, the things in the upstairs, the documents that we have to save, uh, uh, we, again, there's several options. We could rent a physical space, let's say like at Storage World. I contacted them. It's about $170 a month for 10 by 20 uh, unit. We'd need at least two, excuse me, we'd need at least three, if not four or five of those. Um, another option is actually buying a uh, trailer, 10 by 40 trailer. We call the Puzans. Puzans is willing to give us a deal uh, for three at uh, 3,500 pieces with a 495 delivery option. The thing that I like about that one is when we're done, we can sell it. Now, we might not get as much, but we can sell it back. Um, John had expressed a lot of interest in that because he said just basically at every single township, we have a trailer that houses the things that aren't commonly used, like a lot of his stuff, the road closure signs, things like that. So he sees keeping one of those as an asset. Um, unfortunately, a lot of that stuff is still stored at my house and on my, in my personal property. Um, some stuff is here at the building. So buying trailers. So if we were to operate at home, purchase the trailers, um, and then we'd have literally a trailer door open, if we need to get like, a portable heater, they sit in the trailer door open, people come and know exactly where to go and what to do. We had talked about using a trailer potentially as like a communication space because the way I function with the ladies with, with all the paper that we have, it's back and forth. I can't have them coming to my house and dropping those off. It just it gets ridiculous because of my regular work schedule and what your schedules are. So having a physical place where we could know this is where we're going to be at, this is what the access point is, and, and going back and forth. So this is this is what occupied us a lot over the past two weeks. The other issue is the cost of the new proposed bills. So again, thanks to Lee Olson, he gives an excellent floor plan. Um, the cost of building that stick train is about four million dollars. That's the rough estimate. Um, so uh, John and I were just kind of screwing around. We stopped at a steel building place over in Africa, on sort of buildings. We walked in. We said, "Here's a floor plan. What can you do with this?" And so we explained to him what the situation was. I think he underestimated the size of the garages. Um, so for a building, salt sheds, and garages, he gave us a ticket price of under 1.8 million. So that's all three of the aspects for this. Uh, Lee Olson had discussed 4 million for the building, 4 million for this side, and we figured about half a million for park renovations. So taking the park out of this equation just for now, because that's something we definitely have to do because we want to be ADA compliant 
you know, looking at, let's say, a new building sold chip and garages, we're talking about $2 million price tag is what, what I would say. Yeah. Um, and I really did not want to go the route of a steel building, but after walking into this place and looking at it and seeing what they can do to the room, I had to go out of it. No. And this company in particular has done a lot of municipal buildings and they're currently doing a food bank down in Maryland, I think you said. So it's someplace that you can go, uh, you know, if you want to go by yourself, go, you can go check. So you can invite them to come to uh, a meeting and see if they have materials they could bring us. And then you can take a look, of course, they're online as well. So to sum it up, we're going to, if we, we may, we can make the repairs to the building probably to the tune of about $150,000. It doesn't assure us that we could stay in the building. If we can't stay in the building, we have to have we we we've, we've put in 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 place certain options that we can choose from as to what we could do to continue to function as a government. As far as meeting, so we had reached out to the schools as far as renting the space at least for the board meetings, um, workshop meetings may take, continue to take place via Zoom or Teams or whatever it is that we're looking for. The other thing I just wanted to mention, so that people don't think that we're biased uh, about the building, uh, we do know an inspector. He uh, works for Spring Township, plus he has his own business, uh, Troy Hat, who can come in and give us his unbiased opinion over, over our building condition and whether or not, you know, what, what he, because that's what he does for a living, what his assessment is of the building. Because I hate to say, even if we band-aid some of these issues, how much longer do we have to, to work out with this building? It still just doesn't function for our purposes, and the heating and the flint goes just go off the window. I was going to say, yeah. for 150000 we're not actually no. fixing any of the structural underlying problems yeah. where we have a leak in the well line that's the well in the garage. Yeah. We have windows, the entire building that we keep, like I said, we pay one month in, in heating. Oh my God, that's ridiculous. Uh, this, so there's a laundry list yeah. of things that aren't right in the building, not to mention yeah. it doesn't really suit needs. Oh, no, it's awful. So, it's awful. I think we got it. We obviously have to discuss this more. Right. I, I'm personally in favor of getting some sort of hybrid scenario in place where it's work from home and then has some sitting dates somewhere. Yeah. Whether that's the library or whatever, we would still be fun. People can pick up permits, we could drive right. things off, but we could still keep the the, right. the, the cogs of municipal government yeah. moving yeah. on a day-to-day basis of the um, like I said to you earlier, before you leave, I'll get you set up on email and everything. That's that's okay. good. All we have to do is start copying documents up for okay. it. Our chief license is going to expire. In October. This okay. Um, the other part of things is us um, getting our documents scanned. I reached out to ScanTech, which is posters, participating organization. I sent an email. I didn't respond to it because I didn't feel well on it. And so I was so getting our all of our older documents digitized and getting things destroyed that we can get destroyed because we have things up there from 1955. Yeah. So um, speaking about old things, uh, the history rooms is another big topic with, with this as well. I, I think essentially we need to box up what we think we can keep and put in a new building. The rest of the items, unfortunately, we can't take everything with us. So I know Jesse had reached out to Kleinfelters, and Kleinfelters is willing to take all the, a lot of the items and put them up for auction. Um, and so that anyone who wants to take the items, they can take it, um, they, they can purchase it. Um, and or I really don't care if people want to take them all of them. I, I, I really don't. People want to come upstairs. Like I said, we, we take a bunch of the things that we can salvage and that we want to go, again, going with our original plan, keeping these in the hallways, keeping these in the meeting room, having that nice display. I want to harvest those lovely blue cases that we have up there and have those nice displays and keeping a large part of the bunch of what we can, but there's just too much. There's a wardrobe up there. What are we going to do with the wardrobe? There's no place for us to put a wardrobe. Unfortunately, a lot of the stuff up there is in okay to poor condition. And I think this natural building can become literally a dumping site for people to get rid of something that's old that they don't quite know what to do with it. So um, again, Point Belters team take took a look and um we're we're gonna see what we're gonna do. My my immediate thought before we yeah. open up the comment is we get 
the community, like for example, I know Matt Matt Barney, our special the FPCA, uh, ladies that usually do the history yeah. of alumni rooms, come in and tell us what is the stuff that is is right. be, to be blunt about it, right. really worth keeping. Right. Because um, I know up there we have we have duplicates, triplicates, sometimes even quadruplicates. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them that are in the Yeah, there's a lot of them that are in bad shape as well because they, they were protected from the heat, from the sun, yeah. and from moisture too. I think pictures yeah. like thing you can digitize as well, but like you can't digitize a school desk right. or a uniform. But just think about that from now until February. That's the time that we have. If, yeah. if oh. you know, so so it's a very short amount of time. And everyone always says they want this, they want this, they want that. But no one steps up to the plate and says, I'm going to come to the building and these two days I'm going to come here and I'm going to help you. Mm -hmm. Everyone talks about doing something, but no one steps up to the plate and does it. So it's myself, it's Sol, it's it's Lisa, um, it's Sue. Um, sometimes I get to draft my son to, to come and physically help us, but but no one comes to the building and does these tasks that, that we need to get done. So it's just us, and there's only so much time. There's only so much physical capabilities that we have. So, yeah. And I think this is, again, just to yeah. drive that point home. There is plenty of stuff that can be yeah. done. Like, there, there's plenty of things that we want to keep. Like, for example, I think the bell up there is from the one that was the school, I'm not saying. Okay. Um, we definitely would want to keep things like that. Right. We want to keep the school uniform. Keep, but you know, but, but how many school uniforms do we want to keep? Yeah. One or two, or do we want to keep a dozen? I mean, yeah. that's 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 we get to come. And then there's the physical space. We may yeah. not have the physical space to, yeah. to to keep things. So the, um, everyone wants to go through, so give us your opinion. You can yeah. all come up to you. You want to reach out to Matt. Yeah. And that is where we're at. This is what we have to do. Um, you know, come in and uh, let us know. Yeah. The building is between nine to two on Friday. It's close to sleep. Both of our ladies, unfortunately, had scheduled um vacation. their vacations. One had scheduled their vacation before um they were hired, so they're out of the country, and the other one scheduled it. You know, we knew about it, so you know, I'm not faulting them, but they're just always keep track of the hours. But at the same time, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah, so, I, I don't know if I should be the yeah. authority on that, but I yeah. do think we should have the community say, you know, these are things that we keep knowing that we yeah. do need to carry out, especially the situation. So I know Beverly, if you, you wanted to say something. Fair address people at Twelve Water Street. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, um as far as the um the research uh I didn't know the hours, so I were trying to get this. One sure. of the committees to see it and get the stuff. Sure, sure. Um, the other thing is, and there's a lot of things there. There's a lot there. Yeah. Of work. You mentioned about having one. Yeah. I would recommend you find someone else. Okay. Due to the fact that the past two years I've been dealing with them and they have taken most of my husband's attitude stuff and literally not to be, they said they lost, they were taken somewhere else. I have no loss of Thank you. Thank you for the input. One of the other things that might be worth considering is there may be things up there that we could donate to Berks County Historical Society. Yes. Maybe yeah. Yeah. So this is this is just to put a fine point on it. This isn't us just having an auctioneer come in and grab everything. And right. Like that. Right. This is we're trying to streamline so that we're storing the things that are quintessentially Marion County, things that we really want to capture, the things we want to or things that we can't potentially put into a digital format and then if we want to have a photocopy of it, essentially a photocopy. We print it, we print out a nice new photo quality picture of it. Um, but there is a multitude of stuff up there. Just um, and like I said before, things like two, three, four copies of the same thing, but you don't really need to have three or four copies of the same newspaper or you know, uh, whatever the thing is. Uh, Kelly, you want to Kelly Cox for one or she wrote. Um, things for donating, maybe their families want some of those items right. back. Yeah, that's that's um, something I know they're sure. trying to donate a lot. Right. You want to um, get the word out with the company? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my yeah. Is first time. Yeah. yeah. Well, this, like, right. this is the first time. It's okay, like, we need to get the word out. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 
like the poop hit the fan this 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 month, and it was like, oh my god, what are we gonna do? Type of the thing. Like this is this is a can be a, a very expensive issue to us, and we're trying to figure out what's the best course of action. So this is just preemptive planning. I don't like to get caught when my pants down. I like to have a plan in place. If let's say that insurance drops us, literally the building will then be condemned. That's it. No one could come in. So and that would be February. So get the word out. If people want to take things and tell them to give us a call and we can have them come in. They could take the things and, and go from there. I'm fine with that. And just to set sure. the expectations, because this is the first time this is coming up. This was like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, we heard the insurance yeah. company that February is end of the line. Yeah. They will not insure us after February because it's state of the building. Um, and whatever is at that time stays in the building, the building is condemned. We can all come into the building. That would be it. Yeah. So, with that said, we're not going to have somebody come in like tomorrow, obviously, to do any of this stuff, but we need to move on it quick. So yeah. We want to, yeah. We want to get this brought up. We yeah. want to talk about it Thursday night meeting. And then we want to get the word out there, whether it's to people like Anne who have donated things or Barnhart, because he's had his fingers in yeah. sort of stuff for years. Yeah. Karen, thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Yes, Karen. Yeah. Please reach out. Uh, let, let them know what the situation is. I don't think either one of our ladies is going to be. It's on the front door. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, so, so we, we will coordinate with you guys. Even if there's a date like a Saturday, yeah. people need to come in. I'll come open the building up. We, we have to do that route. But yeah. we need to move on this because we know we've got a bad situation. With, just to go back to the building for a second, we can we can burn close to two hundred thousand dollars on basically just kind of keeping the building the way it is, keeping us all insured. Or Instead, turn around and use that two hundred thousand dollars for a new building, a bigger, older. Yeah. Talk about storage. Yeah. Um, and he thought about using the storage units that were here in the township. I was actually going to ask if they had any kind of control. Well, I don't think they control was expensive. I don't so, reach out to him. He's the only company that I didn't reach out to yet. But the thing is, it's just the volume of space that we need. We need so much space. Sounds a little bit, maybe a little bit crazy. Moving stuff from the building. If we have trailers here, it's easy enough for, some, for us to get some of it physically from the building out into the parking lot. If we have to move it off site, we have now rent a vehicle and pay people to do it. We still may need to pay people to move from the building to the outside. Um, I can't. <laughs> um, and I don't know, if, you know, I can't necessarily put other people at that physical expense either. So there's, there's so much cost that we want to avoid. We yeah. Get volunteers. yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure we can find volunteers for certain things. The And the reason that just jumping yeah. back to the climate control yeah. thing is you can pack everything up upstairs there, put it nicely in the box or the coats or whatever, and stick it into a, a storage bin that is going to have fluctuating humidity, fluctuating temperature. All that stuff's going to get ruined. Like by the time we crack it open right. six, eight months from right. now, it's all going to be dead. But than what's happening upstairs it's, right now. It's a little better. Not sunlight. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, yes and no. Yeah. But I have a feeling that if you put it in, just like a storage bin, just empty right. concrete, thin metal door, you're going to have sort of the elements actually raining in on it. It's right. it's not good for historical. Right. Right. Um, so, I don't want to see us get cheap on this and then no, we're just, so obviously, if people want to take a large portion of up there, they can take it. I think we should have a community service. Please let them yeah. know. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whether, whether it's the trailers or the things off site, we are going to need people. Yeah. 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 Which, which we don't have. Yet. Right. Right. But, yeah. So once once we have an idea of, uh, over the materials that we're going to take, is is that's when we know what we're going to do. And the ladies in the office and I were already talking about. It. I said, okay, guys, I said because they have the parameters over the record. So we need to keep what we need to what we can destroy our real estate. What we need to physically keep. So um, I said, okay, guys, October, and this is something that we have, have to do anyway. And this just kind of pushes us in that direction. So I said, okay, October, I want you guys to do the, 
Um, this stuff has to be kept. This stuff can be destroyed. And this is the I don't know pile, basically. I said, if you need me to come, like you, I said to them, give me homework because I get to return to work in October. So if you give me the homework, I will, I will come in and I will make sure that this gets done by October. But we also have the ability to scan our documents at, during this time too. So we're going to have an idea over our physical records that we have to keep and don't have to keep. So we're going to know storage amount, hopefully. Um, there's a lot of things in the building that we are not going to take because of the condition. So these chairs, yes, there's a whole bunch of chairs that are awful conditions in the hallway. There's so many things that we're not going to take because of the poor condition that they're in. We've been limping along with what it, what it has been. Um, so yeah, once we have an idea, let's say we're going to reach out to Matt, we're going to reach out to these other individuals that you mentioned, and we get to say, what is what is it that you want to take home? If Matt wants to help us and say, okay, I'm going to reach out to the Brookstown Historical Society, and they're going to take X, Y, and Z. That's great. Whatever's left over, we're going to look through and say, this is what we're going to display in the new building, given the restrictions that we have for, for size. Um, and then the rest we can auction off. I think that's the best resolution we can come to. Any other kind of like minutes? Before, before you leave, if you have anybody's suggestion, you might want to email. I will jot it down and I will start that email over today. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, the other part of this also is funding. Right? And that was part of the, the conversation we had with Commissioner Rivera. That's the conversation we've been having with the state. Um, and so um, on a conventional loan, we may be able to support up to a million dollars. Um, if we are rejected for conventional loan, we can apply through USDA for a loan, and that would be probably up to a million dollars is what we can afford based on what our current budget is. I know that sounds quite hefty, but we do have $54,000 a year budgeted what towards building maintenance. Um, and so that I, I based it off of that. Not meant to be this full. Or does like the USC wants a 40 year rather than 30? Uh, I think so, 35. Yeah. I mean, some, some weird, yeah. weird thing. Um, but that is like selling my firstborn child. Yeah, it's not if you don't have to do that, right. I prefer not to right. do that, but it's always just kind of I, mean, I read through the 30 some odd page document. But the good thing is, I have all of our financial records. In the book. If, if they're going to go through the past five years, to have all that data and information. I have it ready to go. We have all the information ready to go. And that's the route that we have to take. That would take us anywhere from, I think, six to nine months to even be considered for the funding. So if we can get it through the conventional loan at a reduced rate, and I know I spoke to Fulton Bank and Colin about this previously, and, and that was included in the email to Colin, what, what are the next steps? Because I think current rates are just about 6.2%. We may qualify for something around 4% or maybe even a little lower. You can reduce the overall costs in the township. So, um, again, we want to hopefully get grants. Um, if we, again, this conversation, um, we're waiting for a response from Colin. If we're able to declare this as an emergency, that may open us to grants from FEMA, FEMA which is, which is again, another whole okay. other avenue. So, I'm done talking. So again, Kelly, thank yeah. you for your, your ideas. Thank you for your input. And please keep in touch with me. You have my info. Um, let, let's let's do this. Let's let's get it, you know, in the works. And I really appreciate it. I think I did my homework on our part. And thank you for for picking up something with that. That that would be great. Yeah. Thank you. If you have thoughts or ideas, reach out to me or me or call the office. Yeah. Honestly, open open statement to anybody. Yeah. If you have thoughts or ideas, which we can any of this. Please don't uh, hesitate to, to reach out. Yeah. It's October 6th, and I go back to work. Okay, so we covered number two, number three. I think it's skip number four. four. Uh, okay, number five. Uh, proposed long term rental inspection ordinance and fee schedule. Uh, this is ready for adoption. It would be uh, ordinance 2024 3 uh, and 2024 12. Uh, the first one is the long-term rental ordinance, and then the other one is the adoption of long-term rental uh, ordinance into resolution. There's also the uh, adoption of the new short-term rental uh, resolution, which is 2024-11. Uh, we'll do all that at the Thursday night meeting. You go over anything we need to do on that, but all three of them are properly advertised. Thank you. Uh,
The next thing is the intermunicipal agreement for a potential sewer service. Uh, this is for a land development on, calling Alden on 6th. Uh, this would allow that parcel which splits Marion Township and uh, no. uh, Lower Heights. Uh, no, uh, it's, 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 it's right down my street. Yeah, there is a reason that um, we'll, we'll, we have to do the intermunicipal thing. It's, it's on both properties. It's both on, it's both on in there and. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was because there was the third municipality. So. I don't know. There's a development there that's right off of uh, Main Street and High Street there. Uh, that they're proposing, they would be looking to get sewer service for, I believe, at 62 households. Um, we would have to draft an intermunicipal to allow for the sewer service to go to mobile for because of its travel in two separate municipalities. Um, this would be uh, execution of resolution 2024 15. Um, I've read through it, it's pretty basic. It just says yeah. that we're okay getting sewer service. Yeah. Um, so we'll review that Thursday night. It's a survey out of the but I think that's pretty open and shut. Um, it affects the ADUs, but then like, yeah, it's, but it's, it's from what I understand from talking to Colin, it it doesn't actually change any of the things substantially with the agreement that we have with normal for the fact that they just an addendum saying, hey, we're going to tap these extra 62 households on. Um, and they're they're functionally going to be included in our our, our counts for the purposes of all rate, but it doesn't really change anything else substantially. So more on that, but uh, next thing is the update of the saldo and stormwater ordinance fees. Uh, this is something that we had tasked engineer Bingham to start doing. He submitted his uh, items over for review with attorney McFarland. This is something we need to do. And when it's finally done, we pass a resolution it's for that 16 to get that updated. Got the next one. Yes. Oh, so apparently, this is what Kimberly and Joe had mentioned earlier. This is from last year. This is for the planning uh, for our um, septic system. Excuse me. Yeah. Sewer system, excuse me. Um, we received $56,000.03. Uh, it's $56,003. $56, $3. $3. $3. $3. After meeting, we need to make a motion to accept those funds and a motion to place them in our general fund with purchasing and LC grant. The agenda, so that we have the two motion slots there. It's a, it's a motion needed to- Well, well I've, got, I've got two bullet points, but okay. the okay. actual recording of the oh. motion you seconded, there's only- so, Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm taking care of that. Okay. I'm gonna be probably secretary. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, uh, okay, so more more on that. Uh, the next thing is the budget. Um, yep. I'll do my usual number crunching. What I will need from you is the usual um, process loss. of loss and yeah. our fund performance report for how much we've spent out of each one of the budget yep. lines. Yep. This year. Yep. Um, you know, I think I need you to help me with the computer the way it does it because the profit and loss reads out much differently from the budget. Mm -hmm. And it may be just the way the data is being entered. So I want you to take a look at that with me. Okay. And I need you for numbers. Okay. <laughs> I'll, 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 Other maps as well. I'll come by uh, to the data speed. Yeah. I can feel our work. Yeah, let me know. I'll, you know, I'm available. <laughs> um, good news the Western Burks Joint Zoning Ordinance Section 403 Amendment uh, finally has been completed. All the signatures are on it, so it is done. After Thursday night's meeting, we can take it off the agenda because it is completed. Um, for anybody that hasn't been following along the past two years, this is the ordinance that we were uh, getting updated around the keeping of small domesticated farm animals and pets uh, to be more in line with what our township actually has in terms of people, people keeping chickens, and ducks, things like that at their properties. Next is the Joint Comprehensive Plan. Uh, we did get an email from David Hunter, who is the uh, Berks County Planning Com Director. Uh, we attended a Western, or he attended, excuse me, the Western Berks Joint Zoning Hearing on the 18th of July, uh, where he recommended that all the townships uh, okay. participate in the, uh, the Joint Comprehensive Plan. We all kind of, kind of uh, 11. Uh, we all kind of, 
I'm, I'm using whatever uh, okay. please put on the internet. Okay. Okay. Um, so the joint comprehensive plan, um, all the, the townships that were there kind of, I'll say tentatively agree that it's a good idea to participate in this. Uh, the attorney is reviewing the agreement. There is grant funding for at least 50% or more of the cost of doing this. Yeah. And this is something that you're technically supposed to do every 10 years or so. Um, I think ours is relatively current. Our comprehensive plan, I think, is like 90 years old, so we're just about doing more. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is something that we should do anyway, so we're looking into that further. Uh, next items are around Stonecroft. Uh, the first one is fire suppression. I don't think we've had any developments on that, other than uh, there are still concerns that the, if they try to pump using the pond, it's going to clog with all sorts of things like baby catfish. Um, but we did touch, I think, the last, I was not um, meeting before that was that the, the, the township and all these surrounding uh, fire companies operate under the premise that there is not going to be a water source there. So while we do understand the concerns about the pond, I, I very much would like to see them get fixed. Um, if there is a fire at Stonecrop, you can fully expect that you're going to have tanker truck after tanker truck after tanker truck to respond to that fire. Um, it would be no different than if my house caught fire or Irene's caught house caught fire or Space House Main Street caught fire. You'd get probably Marion Township and Wolf or Fires down the road with a big truck full of water. So uh, we'll have to look on that, but I know there are some outstanding questions about the general, I'll say, state or construction of the pond, which we need the lawyer to input on and the engineer to input on in terms of water that falls in a uh, adherence to plan or it's a warranty situation between the developer and the, the, the rest of the homeowners association. Um, but um, yeah, I was going to say, uh, yeah, we need we need the other input on this because I would love to yeah. give a definitive answer, but I don't know. So what I will say is more to come on that one. We're going to keep it on the agenda until it is settled one way or the other. Um, the next thing is the bond release around the monuments. We had rejected the bond release at the last meeting that I was at. Um, from what Dan told me this morning, um, Stone Group was out and drilled a bunch of holes in the monuments. So, uh, I was not aware of this. I doubt you were aware of this. The office of was not aware of it. So I'm going to call Mike on Monday and see if he knew anything. Uh, I bet you a shiny buffalo nickel that he didn't either. So this is going to be a situation where if they make the request saying, hey, we put all these monuments in, we're going to go, okay, that's nice. We didn't approve that. Wow. So, okay. More, more, more following up. Okay. Um, associated with the monuments, we have a long-standing I have that we are doing to Denmark, that the southeast corner pen for the entire property hmm. It was temporary. It was a tree. And um, the tree is gone. Yeah. And we had asked to remark that they have ignored that. And we would like to make sure that that was included in the monument issue. That, um, that Southeast Corner pen cannot be found. Sorry, Craig Walter, to put these two conversations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, He's making notes here. What's a tree? And the tree goes back to very early deep. So, yeah. one point, I thought I saw something back in there. I just walked out recently. There's nothing over 10 feet tall. So, the tree is tall. I will ask Mike about that. Yeah, because I'm, I'm pretty sure they have to have for again what was in the plan. There needs to be pins, so it may not have been spelled out in the monumenting, but that may have been something in one of the other earlier parts of the plan. Yeah, uh, so. I'll, I'll, I'll double check. I'll, I made a note to ask about the south uh, southeast corner pin not being present. Yeah, all the rest of the pins we couldn't find except for Don William Penn. Uh, they even, they put monuments in there, but. Uh, that issue. Yes, that the any contingency money associated with the bond be retained absolutely as long as possible because issues that reside um, on which protection. Uh, what I will say is we will not release anything unless we are legally obligated to. You know, I think even we're legally obligated to consider fighting. 
one of the other things we ask of landmark is as built drawings, uh, documentation packages for clubhouse on because there is equipment we now have to replace the pond out again or do things on it. I don't know what we have there. Put in several calls to landmarks for P people and they're doing the usual landmark inquiry. The asphalt drawings could um, also need to be reviewed whenever they are presented because I know of several instances where landmark modified swales and such that were shown on drawings not as installed. So I appreciate it, um, to facilitate getting us astral problems. We also need to review them. Um, and your comment about storage of our yeah. information, yeah, that's something that does need but yeah, sort of the trail. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, like I said, I'd hate to see us go through the efforts trying to preserve right. things and then have it be broken anyway. Yeah, um, when we went through the right to know uh, information seen from you guys, the pond appears to have had its money released. That, I believe, was earlier on around one of the one of the construction items, and I thought there were two pieces, but I, I think I was wrong. Um, after the facts, it's not immediately coming to me, but there was something earlier on with. It looked like 21 or so was when some of that in for that stuff got released. It shouldn't have been any earlier than that because one of the primary things was Tom had to be drinking. Um, so I'm rather concerned. It was, it was a party in there. I tried to remember it was, I was on board. I do remember there being something fire department. I remember having a huge amount of discussion. Oh, that's an issue. There's one that was fine. Yeah. Second one. And then the testing out of having been to let go. Yeah. I'll, I'll look. The, 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 the real concern is that upon release, um, we've not seen any of the documentation as to who even reviewed that. And that was something that I asked for specifically in the right to know, was wanted to see that those meetings from the meeting when it was approved, and we wanted to see the comments presentation of who approved it. it I would been that that and, uh, Yeah. We may have to reach back out to the property engineer yeah. if you're taking notes. And yeah. Um, thank you. So, thank you. Can you tell me about the CLA EIA? Um, I'm in 198 Hebrew 20. And you have spoken eloquently about the fire suppression system. Did you bring the speed to look at the YouTube presentation on how to do certification for I personally did not. Well, let me request it to you. I mean, it's publicly available. People like you can show exactly. But you got to move 30,000 gallons. Right. That's 60,000 gallons a week. You have to move to certify. And I again, I would just add to the petition that you freeze, not deny, mm -hmm. but freeze and you release it, any of them. So don't disagree with me. Just believe me. Thank you. You're up to PCCD? Yeah, yeah, I'm making a note. Okay. I could do 13. So we are trying to find times and places for a special meeting. Um, so that's something I know both Lisa and Sol have been working on before they went on the beach. I'll just continue on with some of the agenda items since Peter's making some uh, notes. Um, we have a complaint form and protocol for property damage from smoke. Hold on. 
Yeah, so we're watching around. Okay. So back to, do you want me to? Yeah, do the, well, do the, the, I'm assuming this is about the special meeting. Yeah. Yeah, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Special meeting. Down through. That's all that the special meeting is for. It's just for you guys. Yeah. Well, it's, it's so yeah. 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 Well, so the, the intent behind the special meeting is to have you guys, the HOA, the residents, the board of supervisors, and Stone Group there all in one place where you get this out in the open. Because there's a lot of things that you guys have concerns about and have issues with that I think a lot of it we aren't going to be able to directly action by the bigger stick. We want to get this done. Oh, yeah. All the way. Once and for all. Oh, yeah. You you and me both, then. I would love I to have this. I don't want to try it out. Year and I ask for the year. Yeah. So we, we originally, when we first started to talk about this, we were going to set a date for, for June or July or something like that. Uh, and then there was the thing with the, the Berks County Conservation District moving and the right to no request. We kind of Correct. put it on back burner. And then we had, that when we started renewing that line of inquiry, the school where we were going to rent for Town, town hall meeting, if you will, uh, has less availability now that they were like, we're, you know, just like a school thing and whatever. So we're trying to find the right venue, whether it is the, yeah, the, the elementary school or more people yeah. because uh, the student can only accommodate, like, I think, sorry. yeah, like the maximum. So that we're really yeah. talking with the school district. Schools. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. 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 The D. Matter of getting it together. Solidified and making it like the developer and show some group, you guys, us. So we're also going to find that Thursday evening. Our slide here. We're to have some representatives here again from some group because you're they're requesting bond. Oh, we're we're going to tell them that we're having a special meeting and that we highly encourage them to be there. Oh, okay. Okay. Force them to force their hand yeah. to participate if they want their bond. I'm, I'm on the same page as you, Dan. Okay. Um, Beverly. Beverly Rossman uh, from Home Water State. Did you approach the fire department? I uh, believe we, we actually did. About the holding a special meeting over in the Indian House. I don't think we because did. they got a lot of kids. Um, but somebody asked, um, the so, Sid, schools are probably the best venue because of the seating accommodations, um, and restroom and stuff. So, oh, yeah. I think if, I don't know if they have capacity for 100 people. Yeah. I'll, I'll, like that. I'll, I'll see if we can't reach out to Steve Weaver. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did not. Yeah, they have so some. the schools have availability as far as we know. I think Why? ladies have a certain uh, number of dates. It's just working with everyone else. Like everyone needs to have at least two supervisors there. I was trying to get a class. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm making, I'm making no. Yeah. Okay, so we will we will be hopefully firming things up around the special meeting this week, next week, and we'll be in contact with you guys about that. Um, the, I think the hardest thing is going to be the, the lining up uh, the availability of whatever space, whether it's the church or the school or whatever, um, along with you guys, us, and the Stone Group people. Like, I think they're going to be the, the Delta item on trying to find it. Uh, I up worse than to actually show up. So we'll we'll keep at it. And yeah, yeah, so for your info, yeah. it's under the pictures where the tree should have been. Gotcha. So there's, there's no tree. There's definitely no tree there anymore. Yeah. Yeah, stay away from those wasps. I did a rotate. You told me that's So where did that? So the people come up and say, "Thank you." I mean, we can. Okay. Uh, next, 
We're going to blow through the next couple of road maintenance. Uh, we need to work on updates to our five-year maintenance plan on uh, how we fix and maintain roads to try to further get ourselves on a preventative cycle, cleaning culverts, et cetera. Uh, winners for culvert, what we're talking about, culverts. A uh, special meeting was held on August 15th to award bids. We awarded the bid to Mr. Rehab for a total of $59,521. The notice of acceptance, uh, acceptance and notice to proceed was issued to the contractor. The uh, main road project for 2024, which is Sheridan Road South, who uses drainage and paving improvements. Uh, we also had that on the special meeting on the August 15th to award bids. It was awarded to HK Group for $266,710. Notice of acceptance, notice to proceed was issued to the contract. Uh, guide rails. Uh, we also had um, quotes from guide rails. We made a motion at June's Board of Supervisors meeting to award William Warren's son's bid to the amount $20,218. Notice of acceptance and notice to proceed was issued to the contractor. We're just awaiting scheduling. Uh, the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, we awarded the contract to MA Excavating at the supervisor meeting in June. Uh, however, upon further review by the engineer and the attorney, we found that MA Excavating is only NDOT subcontractor qualified, not NDOT general contractor. This, since this is required in our request for proposal, uh, we had to reject. The contract and bid, and on the special meeting on August 15th, uh, we opened new bids and awarded the bid to All Guyer Enterprises LLC to the amount of $77,875. We issued the notice of acceptance, notice to proceed after that time. Uh, following the road, uh, we did receive a uh, quote around cleaning up some of that fill overflow matter. Um, we did reject the bid based on some specifics that we feel. Artificially inflated the bid. Rebidding will take place sometime starting in December. Uh, I'm going to skip over the rest of the following work matters so that you have the possible location of it. Sure. Um, that just saves some math there. We're going to basically wipe out whatever we're looking at and liquid fuels in the checking. Um, so yeah. we still have about 400000 or so in, in savings. So if something will pop up throughout the year, yeah. we're, we're okay with it. Yeah, when we, yeah. when we do the budget. Yeah. One of the things that we, we do, we just kind of not had to do it the last few years, but we will rebalance the checking and saving right. the house that we have to write things right. Right. So you didn't get our liquid things yet yeah. for this year. But as, as you spoke, spoken, there's their wall amount up until we get to the stormwater pipe. But then it, it, we should be getting our liquid fuels yeah. and going, we have it. There's yeah. still some residual in the account after that. Yeah, it's, we're actually using yeah. a lot of the, yeah. you know, the accounts, so we're getting a lot of stuff done. Yeah. But the unfortunate side of everything that is, of course, the account. You yeah. should, you should have, we're not going to go negative. Yeah. So, uh, but we are going to have to really <laughs> distribute some of the money out of the money market account that we were there yeah. previously, just because it makes more interest for you. Oh, we're getting a great nice amount of interest with that. We're building dollars in interest. So far this year. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, next, uh, 4050 Conrad Park, a wiser yeah. parkway. Uh, Wait, uh, uh, equipment, equipment, air online. Uh, that's further down on line. Line's, line's 31. It's <laughs> uh, Well, I, I would put it this way. I'm on, I'm on 22. So, like, here, check this out. My, uh, my agenda, the one that, it's different. It's different. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the script. We're gonna go off of this. Okay. And we're just gonna go through. We're, we're getting towards the end. Of course, I'm like halfway through. There's not a lot to do on a lot of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I, I believe it. Yeah. So the next thing that I is 4050 Conrad Weiser Parkway, which I don't have any further updates on that. We'll need the engineer or solicitor on that one. Uh, the property maintenance issue at 660 Canal Road. Um, and for everybody, just as a side note, I will try to get that fixed for Thursday night. That way, what is shown is what I have. Um, 660 Canal Road is the AT&T building. Um, so far, they've not started the demolition on that. I think we should send them a letter asking if they can give us any kind of time frame on that, because technically the permit that we gave them is only good for a year. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to see that expire on them. Uh, the next thing is 601 Marion Drive. This is the residence owned by Philip and Julia Weiss. Uh, we will need to pass resolution 
15 to add that property to the ag security area. Vote on that Thursday night. Tends to be here. Uh, the next is Blue Spruce at 4405 Conrad Brooks Parkway. Uh, the property owner is adding an addition to the existing building. Plans have been conditionally approved and are awaiting administrative items uh, to be submitted prior to the plan being reported. Uh, next thing is 85 Main Street, Twilight Acres. Uh, preliminary final plan was submitted. They proposed to add one to the existing building, the old social hall, uh, for a bakery with storage and shipping areas along the cafe. The Planning Commission reviewed, no recommendations were made, and release remaining escrow after final invoice is received. Uh, um, 4315 Conrad Weiser Parkway. Uh, this is an agri agricultural security area. Properties by Justin and Bethany First. Uh, we would need to adopt resolution 2024-13, uh, which would enter the first property into X security. Uh, it's ready to go. We just have to approve it. That's actually we already approved it. We just have to make sure that we the item that there's no additional reporting required. Uh, next is the Jeremy Troutman Poultry Operation Letter of Credit Release. This is for 991 Southford Road. We have received a request for a release in full of the escrow. Project is complete. The engineer is re recommending a full release of credit. Um, and we've sent a letter to the financial institution that holds the letter of credit stating that they can prepare the paperwork. We need to make a motion allowing for that full release of the credit. Uh, next is 13 Tolpe View. Uh, Engineer Bingham visited the property. Uh, vegetation and stabilization of the property are adequate to close the permit. We would just need to make a motion to allow the permit to be closed. Okay, uh, the next thing is the property damage from snowplow report. Um, this or just general property damage uh, report. Uh, Engineer McFarlane is looking over that. We need to have some sort of way of ingressing people's complaints without actually ourselves up with a weird liability uh, situation around that, uh, unintended liability situations. Uh, next, the equipment, the little truck has been successfully repaired. Uh, that was the, all the rust and stuff that was all that. It cost $832 to do that, but it is. Uh, to the bike, yeah. the little truck, little truck, and yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to find it. <laughs> Somebody said to me, Oh my god, I'm going to Vegas. It's over here. And we're like, What's it here? It's in between two buildings. And I'm like, You go into some kind of a beating thing first. Mm -hmm. here. Drop that. No, but, <laughs> no, but it's it's all done. It's uh, hopefully we won't get any snow this year, but if we do, we'll truck ready for it. Uh, next item on the agenda is the John Deere boom. Uh, we need to add some safety lights, lettering, and signage. We are still waiting on the, the title work and the plate to arrive. We did receive a quote from Agritier to fix the mechanical problems that are, are there to the tune of $6,866. I'll just take a look at everything. Yes, Carol, I need your sense. What do you think we need? What do you think we don't need? What do you think we should sell? What do you think we should keep? One your professional assessment on this. Okay. And he's going to give us some feedback. Um, the question is, is, is do we need this from more? Do we need to fix it and sell it or sell it as it is? So, uh, yeah, we'll wait just for some feedback from him. Okay. okay. Township is also potentially looking at the purchase of a blower to attach to the back of the John Deere tractor to remove black eyed grass, the three while we're mowing. Current brush that we're using is falling apart. Based on the fact that we're at the end of the season, I would say maybe in this for a little bit. It's most of the stuff that ranges from around thirty-two hundred to about seventy-one hundred dollars. I would say maybe we start looking at that late here. The other thing is prices always go all on the year. That's true. Yeah. So, so I'd say if you're going to buy our bike, wait until the trip is your bike stand up two, three weeks. That's fair. Let me look at this in further, further detail. Let's get Jesse and Carl's opinion on it yeah. too. I, just, I don't think you need anything crazy. So, like, if that the thirty two hundred dollar one will work well enough, then we just we get that. Um, sure. We do. We do need something. We don't want to leave it. Right. Break. You we can't. We, we only need chance. Right. Uh, that was an issue. Yeah. Uh, next, uh, I saw payroll uh, information has been received on timekeeping and hiring processes that were updated. 
Okay, well, this is yeah. now, and like I said, I, I'm, I'm working off the script that I, I got from yeah. Lisa in terms of order of agenda yeah. items. So I'll make sure I'll make sure I'll make sure everybody's updated. Um, I'll take one of the agendas with me because it's supposed to be the same agenda for Thursday night. So I'll just make sure my stuff I'll copy and paste so that it, it matches up. With what, stuff yeah, uh, yeah, it's easier for me to change this than it is to change yeah. everything else. So I'll I'll take care of that this week okay. for Thursday. Um, road crew, uh, we're going to create a list of duties, formal duties assigned to the road crew. Jesse is working on this. Um, and we've been bouncing emails back and forth with ideas to be added uh, to be put in for review. Uh, Berks County Public Works Association annual trade show. Uh, road crew has asked if they want to attend. Nobody said yes. So no, Marion Township will be attending. Uh, the next thing is Richard Troutman Jr. has resigned as the roadmaster effective September 14th, 2024. Submitted his uh, letter of resignation, uh, which we received on uh, September 3rd. We need to make a motion to accept the resignation and a, a motion needed to send a thank you card for this long service. We'll do that Thursday night. The next thing would be the discussion around full time road crew. Um, we have the ability to hire full time without. Uh, issuing benefits to fit into that category. So we're going to discuss if we want to make Carl Leptak, who was just hired as a road crew, full-time road master, since he's essentially a road crew at this mm -hmm. point. Uh, he's currently part-time, so we'll talk about that more on Thursday night. And kind of as a housekeeping item, with the resignation of, of Butch, we need to remove his credit cards and destroy them. Uh, so the housekeeping item will make a motion to remove and destroy the credit card of Richard Troutman Jr. Second. Okay. Motion carried, Peter. Yep. Okay. Let me make notes here so that record. Yep. Roll call is unanimous. Motion carried. Uh, the next thing is to remove Butch Troutman or Richard Troutman Jr. from the accounts, any of the accounts of Colton. I'll make a motion. Second. Motion carries. Uh, next is to add Lisa, Secretary Lisa Haggerly to the account of Fulton. Second. Well, um, obviously, I, I approve that your personal motion carried. Credit card. Yes, thank you. The Fulton Bank credit card account for purposes of record. Uh, and then add uh, Carl Liptak. Motion to add Carl Liptak as uh, onto the Fulton Bank credit card account. Second. Okay, motion carried. Okay, next is uh, around Microsoft 365. Um, I've been getting everything set up. Everybody has email accounts. And just from looking at it, I think we may actually have more options available to us if we give uh, Lisa and Sol individual licenses, because then I can set up the office account as a shared mailbox. Okay. Um, and they'll be able to use individual calendars as well as a shared calendar. And it, Generally, I think it'll just put together better for what they do today on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, this would be in purchasing two more licenses, which I remember about six months ago. So I want you again to reach out to Mike Roberts um, because it, it, it turns out the cost. What is the cost of the one that you're proposing mm -hmm. versus the cost of what, what he has in mind? The other thing is getting everything to oh, what, cloud. What he's proposing is the same thing. Okay. Like, the, only, the only difference, and that's... I didn't see that. It's in the packet, but I didn't see yeah. it. Um, we don't need the, the backup. Okay. So, and before you leave, I'll show you, I'll get you signed in and I'll show you what it is. We have the ability to put all of our documents in the chair. We have like a 10 terabyte. Okay. We've got plenty of space. Now, now SharePoint is? SharePoint is, is it's a, a database of the cloud. Okay. It's, it's Microsoft Cloud. So, so we, what, we, what we have on our terminals, our server needs to be cloud to Everything you uh, and the nice thing about that is it's it's copy paste. It's as easy as you copy and paste it, and then we let it run for what that day. Okay. Because that's all. Um, the other thing okay. is if we have individual licenses for Lisa and Sol, they have uh, OneDrive, which okay. is effectively just like SharePoint for your desktop okay. space, where we can have it automatically back stuff up. If they okay. save things to their documents, or their downloads, or whatever, it will just sync up to the cloud. That way, if that computer Actress fire or you know, building falls down or whatever, that's just automatically back. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, the, yeah. the only thing that we would be looking at 
is if you guys are this, this is standard is the physically installed okay. things. And that's that's not the problem. The problem is if the password on the computer that like, can't be solved. If you have a we have an office license already. So we don't need that. We don't need that. I think we had actually already approved the spam okay. filter thing. So they can they can do that whenever. Um, we, the only thing is we might need to increase the count to six because okay. of Sol and Lisa. At some point, I need you to be physically present in the office. Yeah. Get on the phone with, with Mike. Yeah. Get all this stuff done. Yeah. Because it can be easy to well, practice. Well, like, this, is, this, is, this is not needed. This yeah. is not needed. Okay. This we already have a purchase for a waste. So they should have it. Yeah. On the yeah. Phone. It's going to expire. Well, we just got it. Okay. Yeah. That's, and that's it. Um, that actually might be something we just set up a renewal and buy the credit card. Um, yeah, everything needs to get up to before, the like I said, before you and I leave, I will make sure okay. that we just like I can okay. access it from my phone. Um, okay. I got everything set up. If you email supervisors at Barry and PWP Works, it sends an email to the three of us, like you and Jesse. Um, and what I want to do is I want to take that office account, which is its own, its own account. I want to split it back so that okay. it's Lisa and, and Sol. Okay. Actually, technically, I think we only need to buy one license. Um, I'll double check, but if we're going to get to so many users on your yeah, well, yeah. if we change the office now box to be a shared one, it doesn't need a license of its own. Yeah. The, the only stipulation on that is everybody that has that shared in the box has it. So if we take a license from that one, we get Lisa and buy another one for Sol. We're only buying one additional license, but we're getting their email accounts and the ability to still use that office, okay. which I think is, is better, better use of that. Um, uh, but bottom line is our SharePoint repository is there. We just have to start adding files to it. Your email is there. We just have to you know, start using it, start transitioning over to okay. that. It's just irene.celeski at marionpwpverbs.com. Okay, feel free to show me. Yeah, like I said, before we leave, I'll make sure you got that set up. Okay. Um, but we're we're solid there. So like I said, that quote from from Mike. Other than buying two additional spam filtering licenses, we don't need to do it. Um, uh, next item number forty one for me is the zoning hearing board. Uh, David Stavi resigned. There is an opening that we need to uh, serve. Uh, again, an open statement to anybody watching this on YouTube. Um, will be very few people that are in the audience today. If you know somebody who has a uh, aptitude or interest for zoning hearing and that sort of governmental process, please let us know. We would love to talk to them. Um, this is a, a situation where this is not something that a board member can serve on. If you are a supervisor, you cannot be part of the zoning hearing. So, uh, otherwise, I'm sure most would volunteer. Uh, next is the setting the trick or treat night. Uh, we can talk about this on Thursday, but I'm, it's Halloween. So I'm all um, so I don't think Jess is going to disagree with that at all. So I'll make a motion to set the trick or treat uh, time or date and time for Thursday, October 31st, 2024, uh, from 6 to 9 p.m. Seven. 6 to 8. 6 to 8. 6 to 8. Yeah. Okay. 6, six to 8. Yeah. 6 to 8. Okay. 6 to 8 p.m. So I'll, I'll, I'll revise that motion to you in a second. Awesome. Thank you. Um, motion carried. Okay, last, the second to last item, uh, actually last item, because I don't think we have anything uh, for number 44 is around the graffiti and the, the vandalism. So someone, the same someone that painted the actually somewhat nice mural on the side of the, the shed, graffitied up the MTCA trailer with a giant uh, trunk set of graffiti like you'd see on the side of a rail. So same person, signed by the same person, so we had the road crew paint over both. And thinking on that, we were willing to turn a blind eye to the, the first thing because it was a mural, but it was still graffiti, it was unauthorized. Um, because that same person graffitied something else, we treat them both as graffiti. It is vandalism at that point. So they didn't paint it. If somebody wants to paint a mural on something, please bring the proposal to the board. We're receptive to the idea. Honestly speaking, if that person had approached us about the shed, we probably would have okayed it and it would still be there. But that particular person uh, kind of overstepped their bounds the first time and then really overstepped their bounds the second time. 
So that's the situation that we're in. So the Tulpy PD has been notified of this. We filed an official report, but uh, at this point, um, just to reiterate, whether it's a community association, somebody in the community, anybody, if you wanna do something like that, you need to bring it to the board. And if we okay it, you can do it. And if we don't okay it, then obviously you can't do it. But what we don't wanna have is unchecked, random graffiti, even if it is pretty, uh, popping up around the community. That's, that's not the, I'll say the, the outcome that we, we wanna have in this situation at all. So, do you have anything else you want to say on that? No. Okay. Um, since we don't have the emergency management coordinator here, we're going to skip that. Um, this says an FYI, and I'll bring it up on Thursday night too. We are changing the polling location for the electric. It's going to be over at the, the fire hall, our engine house on uh, 422. Uh, I actually got something in the mail notifying me too. I don't yep. know if anybody else has gotten that yet. But, yep. um, I really get any comments. Residents may have received a uh, card where there's a lawsuit against AJ Bozenski, which purchased Eagle. Um, there's a class action suit if anyone received the card in the mail. If they need information um, regarding the dates of um, complaints were made, they can always contact the office because we have that information filed. We had a, a resident call in about receiving the notice, and they were a little bit perplexed as to why the township uh, didn't handle it. Um, after they talked to her for a few minutes, I'm like, oh, you got all of those cards in the mail. I hadn't gone home yet. As soon as I got home, there it was. So there's a class action suit that a private residence initiated against uh, the company, but because there's some people that was uh, certified as class action. So we have some information if you choose to file, if you choose to participate in the class action. Okay. Um, please, we don't have any other, anybody up here to make yeah. comments. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 10, 26, 8 now. Second that motion. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you Thursday. Please sign up. You got a buddy under here?